Thank you. How's it going? All right, so I'm going to take a selfie because I always forget taking pictures when I go to the events. And this is my first event in uh, Romania. So you guys uh, make some noise. Yes. Excellent. I think I'm going to lose the microphone. That's all right. This is going to be on Twitter. So if you did something embarrassing, the world will know about it. All right. So let's talk about the real stuff and building chatbots. So the agenda for today is as follows. Uh, we will try to answer a few questions. Uh, first one is what do chatbots eat? Uh, whether they have dreams? It's a serious question. Um, why even use chatbots? Um, and wh what are the usual chatbot challenges? And we will go and build one. So that's pretty cool. And I do recommend to try it at home. It doesn't hurt. Normally, not many people die trying to build chatbots. So first thing first, uh, what do chatbots eat? Anyone care to guess? It's pretty easy. No, they don't eat code. They eat pizza. Of course. Chatbots are built by developers, therefore they eat pizza. Duh. All right. Oh, it was a good attempt, though. Good attempt. Do chatbots have dreams? Yes or no? Quickly. Of course they do. What do they dream about? No. They dream about electric ship. You know, Blade Runner stuff. All right. More seriously, like why do we even want to use chatbots, right? Like why would you want to build one? Um, and when I ask myself this question, I look more about how we communicate, right? So the way I remember when I was a kid, if I wanted to talk to a friend or something, I would go knock at the door and we would talk, right? But the, the way we communicate actually changed. So now instead, we will actually text each other, right? Like I've been uh, at dinner tables where I would be texting somebody sitting right, right next to me. Know? And, and you, you're laughing, but pretty much how of you did that, right? So it, it, it's pretty serious. And therefore, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, uh, they should also adapt to communicate with uh, their user base uh, through text, right? Because that just basically makes sense. Um, and you have a whole lot of different benefits uh, that go with it, right? Like you get improved uh, customer service, uh, you can remove all the pain points that come from call center. Um, chatbots really don't need food, like they can multiply very easily, right? They can handle and scale and they can go 24 seven, right? Which is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, they don't get bored and they, they're very good at handling repetitive tasks. So, you know, like if you work in a call center and I ask you the same question like 10,000 times, you probably wanna hurt yourself, right? After a while, the chatbots, they're super happy because if they answer it for the 10,000th time, that means that they're doing a good job. Um, the speed of communication is pretty great too. Uh, and that's actually also because they can very easily connect with all your APIs, right? So even the best person in the call center would still need to spend some time in Salesforce or whatever other system that uh, you would be using to find out the answer while the chatbot just fires a quick query and then can get back with the answers to the user, which is pretty great. Um, I have this slide twice. I mean, the slide was so nice, I had to have it twice. But let's face it, the real reason all of you are here that would want to actually build a chatbot is because it's fun to build one. That's it, it's like and the gold represent me building chatbots. Like, what else do you want from life, right? Um, so what are the usual challenges that we are facing? Is it keep falling down? You see, this is why my talk should be done through a chatbot. Like, next time, I'm definitely gonna do that. All right? Yeah, ooh, now I'm loud. Loud and clear. Houston, you hear me? All right, I'll just stay like this. See, I, I have unusual ears. Like, they just don't work. <laughs> that's the, that's, that's the basically the conclusion of my talk. Um, all right, so the usual challenges. So I, I wanted to build a chatbot for a long while. And I'll be trying different uh, technologies. I'm not gonna name them. No naming, no shaming today. Just, we are happy. Uh, and then one of the first things that I noticed that a lot of chatbots were doing, especially those like DIY ones, where they had like fixed decision trees. What I mean by that is that the chat was expected to you to do something in specific order. And if you did something out of order, it just didn't work. So here's one chatbot conversation that I had. Uh, somebody goes like, hey, I wanna book a flight to London for Wednesday. I can help you book a flight. So far, so good. 
where do you want to go? I mean, I just told you, but fair enough. Let's say London, when? On Wednesday, sorry didn't get that. All right, I'm gonna give you a date. And it's just kind of getting tiring. So what's really happening here is the chatbot had like first step. Let me identify the conversation. Oh, you wanna fly somewhere. Okay, now let me ask you for, for when and for where. Right? And this is the problem. The chatbot should be able to get all this information and let you drive the conversation. For how many? So, lack of understanding of business entities. So, if you're building a chatbot for a hospital, for an office, for a pizza restaurant, we'll do that in a moment, the chatbot should be able to understand those entities, right? So, if this is a chatbot for a hospital, it should know what doctors are in that hospital, right? So, if I say something like, I want to Meet, I want to meet with Dr. Burke on Tuesday, right? Pretty straightforward. Sure, I can help you book an appointment. What is your doctor's name? Oh, what? What time would you like to see Dr. What? <laughs> what is going on? I'm not sure I understand you. Me neither. I was like, <laughs> this is not going anywhere, right? The chatbot should understand that Dr. Berg is one of the doctors in this hospital, right? And not ask silly questions after. So the real solution should be, I want to see Dr. Berg. The chatbot should be able to link it to your backend and understand that Dr. Berg actually correlates to a record in your database. And then automatically you should be able to know when it's available, what is speciality, and all sort of things like that. Uh, so now when we have this conversation, I want to see Dr. Berg. Sure, what time would you like to meet Dr. Burke, right? Next one is lack of proper acknowledgement. So the whole thing is that whenever I give you some extra information or a lot of information, the chatbot should acknowledge that, right? If I ask you for one question and just give me an answer, it's okay. But if I give you loads of information, uh, the chatbot should acknowledge it. So here's one. Hi, I would like to sign up for a health insurance for a surfing trip to Timmy Sawara from June 9th to June 14th. Nothing weird here, okay? Um, and the chatbot is like, what's your age? Um, did, you, did, you, did you understand that I wanna do, you know, Timmy Sawara surfing thing? I don't know, I don't know. The proper solution to that should be, I wanna go for a surfing trip to Timmy Sawara, June 9th to June 14th, and the chatbot should respond with, a surfing trip to Timmy Sawara Timmy Soara is always a good idea. Why not? Let's add a server. And let's find you an insurance for this specific date. So not only did it acknowledge, but also provided like more detailed dates on where you would want to go to kind of feel more comfortable. So now when it's asking for your age, that means that the next question and is relevant to this whole conversation. Next, dealing with ambiguities or not dealing with them, right? So English, I actually believe that English is like one of the most ambiguous languages I ever heard. It's like it's so easy to say something that would be, could be easily co interpreted as five different things, right? And, and like I speak Polish, that's much more uh, accurate language, uh, and yet there's still loads of uh, ambiguities. And it's very easy, especially for a chatbot and natural language processing to confuse uh, about the information. So you have a very simple scenario like this. I talked to Dr. Burke, he told me to book an appointment with Dr. Alcott, right? And for some reason, the chatbot thinks that, well, the first doctor you mentioned, you probably want to see that guy, right? Um, like, no, 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 I want to see Dr. Alcott, right? So what happens is when the chatbot hears of two doctors and needs to deal with them, it should give you an opportunity to kind of like correct it, right? Like, if I'm confused, like, I'm going to ask you questions, like, because I am an intelligent being. So I want to... I talked to Dr. Burke, he told me to see Dr. Alcott. All right, let's deal with that. Can you please clarify which doctor do you want to see, right? And now, yeah, it's not perfect that he didn't guess straight away, but at least gives me an option. I can choose Dr. Alcott and we can car carry on. Lack of long-term memory. So with dealing with machines connected to databases and everything, it should remember the stuff that we provide him, right? So if I do st stuff like, Booking an appointment every Tuesday, right? Dr. Berg on Tuesday at 11. Perfect, absolutely, let's book you the appointment. What is your phone number? See, the weird thing here is that if I went through this conversation every week, why is this still asking me for that, right? Like, don't you have it already, right? 
The proper thing is uh, we should be able to train the chatbot to remember certain pieces of information. So if you keep telling me you want to see this doctor at these times and I need your phone number, I can provide it. Say like, hey, is this your phone number? And I get an option to acknowledge it or change it. Anyone care to, to guess whose phone number this is? It's somebody very important in the UK. It's Boris Johnson, very well. If you want to give him a call, you go ahead. That's his phone number. <laughs> good job, good job. Um, before it was Theresa May's phone number, so obviously she changed it. That's why there's an option for no. Easy. Next one, lack of conversation UI. So we're talking about chatbots and having text, text, text. But we should be able to aid the user throughout the conversation, right? So again, we book in a lot of appointments today. Dr. Burke on Tuesday. I understand how you want to see Dr. Burke. What time? Anything wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with this is why well, I'm saying I want to see him at 12, but he's busy at 12, right? Sorry. What time? This is, you know, this is going to take a while for you to guess when he's available, or she. Uh, actually, it's John, so that's definitely a he. Um, sorry, didn't get that. So the proper way of dealing with it is I want to see Dr. Berg on Tuesday. I know which doctor, I know Tuesday. Let me look, let me look up when he's available and provide available option. So now, me as a user, I can choose 11 or 15 or 15.30, right? And that's making a lot simpler. So these are like actually quite common challenges. So it should be pretty easy to build your own chatbot from scratch, right? Well, so that was like two years ago, three years ago. I'm fuzzy on the dates. Uh, we had a hackathon at Progress for like uh, two days. And one of the teams decided to build a chatbot from scratch um, that was basically a virtual assistant that would allow you to book meeting rooms, right? We have meeting rooms like in Sydney, in Boston, in Sofia, like loads of different places. Should be pretty simple, right? I mean, you just want to say where you want it, for how many people do you want a TV or a projector or, or be able to make external calls or sort of things, right? So like our developers, like they were ready to go and build it, you know, like super excited. The source code was coming down. Um, and then the designers came in and we came up with this. This is a, literally a picture of our first decision tree for this virtual assistant. So imagine now writing all if state, if else statements to kind of follow the whole tree. Like, um, I don't have to tell you much, but basically we did about 10% of that in the, in the two days. And then changing anything after was a completely dis complete disaster. So basically the outcome after 48 hours was this. Yeah, we had to find new developers <laughs> and a new cat. <laughs> uh, I love crazy cats. Um, so as a result, we actually decided to create an engine that could enable us to do this. Like we basically thought like creating chatbots with pure code logic just wouldn't make sense. It just wouldn't work. Um, so we created a chatbot also that use declarative language uh, to construct a conversation or do what we want to do. Uh, so basically, instead of telling specific steps of how, of how it has to perform, we kind of tell him, hey, if somebody says this, I want, that probably means that they want to do this conversation, and that means that we need to ask them for these pieces of data. So we declare what we want to extract from the user, and the chatbot controls the flow. Right? That's a pretty cool thing. So here's an example of me declaring a step. I have this conversation when I want to ask a question, right? Then I would say, well, the question will be of type uh, country, and then entity is basically like a name of a variable. Okay, so far so good. We have four different countries. Next, there is a message. So there's like a prompt on how do I ask the user for which country they want? And then finally, we can also add some addition aid in terms of, hey, should I display the list of countries to the user or just use the free text? And just that results in conversation that can perform this. I want to order a car. Welcome to car rental. Which country you want to go? And you have those options of the countries popping up. Just that. It's, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. 
And the best thing is that all of that pretty much works with Messenger, Viber, like any website, you can just drop it, be it Angular, uh, React, like pure JavaScript just works. You can also drop it in the native mobile applications, native script. Um, we actually just added Alexa, so it's not coming soon anymore, but we are thinking and working on WhatsApp. Uh, so those will be others, but basically with one code, you can cover those platforms, which is pretty awesome. So it's time to build a demo. So I'm a bit crazy. I love doing live coding. I don't know why people fear live coding. I mean, there's so many crazy things that can go wrong. And um, if we don't live for that, what do we live for, right? Um, okay, so basically the whole conversation at the moment we're building by constructing JSON, right? And there's loads of code snippets that help me do it. So I can say, I wanna do a conversation of type go, and I will call it order pizza, okay? Um, and then I can do uh, the step message just to test that everything works, right? Hello, Timmy Goara. Check out my spelling. Very good. Very good. So in a training, I have to train the, the, the uh, chatbot to understand when to trigger this conversation, right? So I want to call this order pizza conversation. When somebody says, I am hungry, I want a pizza, give me pizza. Because reasons, right? And I can already test this uh, in like, there's like a console that allows me to test stuff and I can say, uh, I am hungry. And then respond with hello Timmy Sawara. So we have some sort of logic. Um, uh, let's see if I understand if I say I hungry, I hungry. Yes, still responds. He thought 84% was, that was the accuracy. So pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so we are on the way to go. So, all right. So in order to order pizza, we should be able to ask a couple of things like what's the size um, and what type of pizza we want. So we need to train it with type of entities, right? So we will have one entity called size and I'll just create a static list. So I'll list them basically just saying uh, there should be a small pizza. Come on, there should be a medium pizza, all right? And there should be large. Like static lists work well, they're short and you're not, you're not changing them too often. Uh, I could also make it like 18 inch an alias. So if I say either the actual name or, or the size in inches, that, that both of them would work, right? Okay. So we have size. Let's also add a pizza. So just half an hour ago, I built this backend that returns a list of pizzas. So you can see I have like a name, price, image, and type. So I am going to t t train my chatbot to get that data. So, okay, I'll load it dynamically from this URL. And the value is basically the name property. So I will be training and I can test it to, to tr train the chatbot so that it understands that when I say ham, pepperoni, or meat, or veggie, that means that I'm talking about pizza, right? So let's press create. Um, so now I have two additional types. The chatbot very quickly, quickly retrains itself. And I can even test it here, like say a random sentence with medium to large meat pizza. And this is just purely for testing an NLP, natural language processing. So you see, it recognizes medium and large as sizes and meat as pizza. So, so far so good. All right, so let's go back to our cognitive flow where I'll train my chatbot to ask questions, right? Now we start with the user interrogation or some people call it just conversation. So. First step, question. So we'll be asking for size, so the variable name is size, the type is size. Uh, what is the size? Uh, I would just say what size, right? Like short and easy. Uh, and then I'll also add display of type 
quick reply. Nice, so we have one step. Let's do another step question. Uh, and this time we'll get a pizza. Also pizza, pizza, uh, which pizza would you like? Uh, and then again display type quick reply. All right, let's, let's test this chatbot. Um, the thing is I also have this chatbot uh, there's like bits where I can publish it to like Facebook, to Alexa and, and other, other devices. So I have actually a messenger here. Let's make it bigger. And I can, I already, did I save it? Let's make sure, oh, I probably did. All right, where was it? So I can already in real messenger, like if you actually go to this URL, you could test it yourself. Uh, I can say, I am hungry. See what happens. What size? Hey, live coding, what can go wrong? Uh, make it large. Which pizza? Uh, let's see what other pizza are there. Okay, let's go with taco pizza because that basically makes sense. Um, uh, there should not be a res response. Anyway, basically that was me already testing it in Messenger, and that works pretty nicely. Uh, we can do all sort of things like, I can display the, the options as a carousel, like with images and things like that. Or maybe instead of talking about it, I could maybe do it. All right, let's do it. Carousel. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> so I will say data source. Okay. What do we have here? An endpoint, so load the, because we can provide specific queries, like if you wanna just show veggie pizzas or something else, that's uh, pretty doable. Um, all right, what else do we need? There should be a button text, uh, select, uh, and title maybe? I'll also do select, why not? All right, template. So in the template, we're basically telling like the title. So I'm using like a double handlebar to specifically pull fields. So I wanna display as a title the name. Um, I think I have a subtitle. So I can do, for example, pizza um, dot price. Oh, that should be in the double handlebar. And I think there was an image which was, oh, actually. Uh, now I'm a bit fuzzy, what is it? What do I need to? I don't think I need this, sorry. All right, let's try that. See if I tr test it here. I want a large pizza. That should work should automatically understand. And you see we have a nice carousel like showing all the pizzas. Like how cool is that? I can press select and it goes with pepperoni. Um, but since I chose the size, it didn't really acknowledge the fact that um, I wanted a large pizza, okay? So let's, let me fix this. So what I can do is I'll try a couple of things. So we have this thing called reactions. So what the first one is on the size, we have acknowledge. So you can say, I see you like your pizza, and then I can say size, right? And basically, that will put, put it in there. Uh, I can also have another one, which is suggestions. So this one is usually, usually you have your pizza size, okay? So this is where chatbot can actually learn from you about uh, your previous preferences, okay? So let's test that. So from now on, it starts learning. So I am hungry. I'm gonna choose small, and I'm gonna go with ham pizza. Cool, again, I want a pizza. This time, small is the first option. Right, it's learning. All right, let's go with small. This time on a pepperoni. Okay, I am 
hungry. Usually you have your pizza small. It is like it's helping us. So I can say yes and we can keep going and everybody's happy and this time we'll go with meat. And then finally I can say I am hungry for a large pizza. See if that works. I see you like your pizza large. So there, there you go, you have that acknowledgement. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so what we need to basically do next is maybe have, <clears throat> I'm gonna remove the carousel because I wanna show you how, if, how this whole thing works with an Alexa device. And usually you won't be able to actually see the images here because the screen is small. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, so quick reply, that, that should do it for the pizza. Let's ask couple, one more question, like step, question, uh, location. Uh, that's a text. So I we can ask, where should I send it to? Uh, let's do another question, like confirmation. That wasn't me. I, I, that definitely wasn't me. Um, so we can say, Should we, okay, you are about to order a pizza. Oh, let's add size. So, ugh. so basically, you're about to order a size pizza to location, right? So this will be there, uh, in there. Is that correct? And there'll be like a yes or no question. And then finally, we wanna save it somewhere, like uh, make an order or something, right? So I created this API, which is like a basket. So what I can do is something like this. Uh, so currently, I'm gonna make a webhook call. Uh, and what this will do is basically something like that. So I have my sample basket, uh, I'll call it pizza. Uh, so that's the ID of the basket, uh, and then add. And the name of the item that I want to add is pizza. And we probably also need to add uh, price. So each pizza item actually contains a pizza.price entity. So I think this should work. So let's test it here before I, I, trust, uh, I try it on Alexa. So final demo on here. I want a large pizza. Cool. Uh, let's go with Margarita. Where should I send it? Revo JS venue. There you go. You're about to order a large Margarita to Revo JS venue. Is that correct? Yes, and now we send a query, or and are you going to sleep? No, okay, oof, getting nervous. So I have my basket, uh, that was a pizza ID. There you go, so Margarita is in my basket now. Uh, I think somebody else was using my API in the meantime and ordered a meat pizza, like hey, why not? All right, let's do a demo with Alexa. So what I have is, you could test it directly uh, from like Alexa Developer Console, but I already also connected my sample app into an actual skill. So we are going to do it. Let's see. I'm excited. All right, Alexa, ask sample to order a pizza. What size? Large, medium, small. Medium. I am not sure I understood what you said. All right. Alexa, what size? small. I am not sure I understood what you said. What size? Large. Alexa. Medium. Large. Large? I am not sure I understood what you said. What size? Large. Alexa. Medium. Restart. All right, we'll do it one more time. One more time. 
I... Your conversation is restarted. Okay. Alexa, if you get stuck, you can... Order a large pizza. I see you like your pizza large. Which pizza would you like? Ham. Kale ricotta. Margarita. Meat. Alexa. Pepperoni. Meat. Where should I send it to? Timmy Sawara. If you get stuck, you can always restart our conversation by typing restart. Here is what I can do for you. Suspicious transaction. Missing card. Order a book. Uh, clearly, Alexa doesn't know about Timmy Sawara. Alexa, continue. If you get stuck, you can always restart right. our conversation by typing restart. Alexa, Here order, is what I... order a pizza. Just continue the conversation. You see, this is why if you get like stuck, it. you can always restart our conversation by typing Alexa, restart. Alexa, listen to me. Order a pizza. If you get stuck, you can always restart Alexa, our conversation by typing Go home, you're drunk. Anyway! Alright, alright, this is what's gonna happen. Bah. Um, there's many reasons to blame for that. There's so many reasons to blame for that. Um, this is not the worst thing that happened to me. I was running a live webinar once. And I was trying to tell Alexa that I want to top up my phone. And the, the response was like, ask for a fart. I was like, what? I didn't say that. Uh, uh, but, you know, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. Um, you see, this one understands pretty well. All right, continue. So what do you think? Is that cool or not? Do I? Yes? Yeah? So where to, where to go next? Uh, you can take a picture of that. I'll tell you when. Um, there's a website where you can learn uh, about what actually the Kimbe chat is. There's even a, a tutorial that I created that you can learn in like two, three hours. You can learn quite a lot. Um, we are about to publish one for also how to do it for Alexa. So that should be nice and easy. Uh, the developer playground that I was using is basically bots.kimbe.com. Uh, and the documentation is at docs.nativechat.com. We're kind of rebranding things, so just bear with us. We even have a case study. So our first customer was a hospital in, in Sofia, Dr. Sterev, uh, and it was pretty awesome for them. Uh, and there is even an Angular demo that you could uh, test out if you go to that bit.ly link. So now is the time to take a picture. And I can post. All right, too late. All right. So um, an important announcement. No electric sheep were heard during the making of this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.